Sunday School Lesson for May 31st, 2015. Lesson 14. Unit 3. One in the Bond of Love. A lesson titled, Love Never Ends. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Our background scripture is from 1 Corinthians, the entire 13th chapter. And our printed text is also from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 13. And our key verse, now abide the faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13.13 Our lesson name as a result of studying this lesson that the students should be able to explore the meaning of love as seen in 1 Corinthians 13. Appreciate one another in love. And thirdly, find a variety of ways to express love. Love never ends. In our lesson, in this 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, here it is placed to make a strong declaration concerning spiritual gifts. In chapter 12, it talks about spiritual gifts, and then in chapter 14, it talks about the use of those spiritual gifts. But Paul, the Holy Spirit used the Apostle Paul to, to place chapter 13 right in the midst of those two object lessons. The church at Corinth, the members there had begun to be lifted up in pride and self-edification and glory over the spiritual gifts that they had received that that they began to use them in a way that was not intended by the Holy Spirit. And these were spiritual enablements which the Holy Spirit has, has given them for the body of Christ and not for self-glorification. So in this 13th chapter, the Spirit of God tells us in them how these gifts are to be used. We find written in verses 1 through 3 where it states, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have not love, it profit me nothing. Here the apostle is saying, though I speak with tongues. That is, a man that would speak with a, all the known languages of the earth. Not unknown tongues, but different dialect, different languages. And that he was able to speak with elegance. And that he was so civil tongue, And that he was just mighty in speech. Or if he could talk the heavenly talks of angels and have not love, it would all be nothing but empty noise. That he just would be just talking loud and saying nothing. Even with the gift of prophecies and understanding of mysteries and all knowledge and without love is nothing. One could have an accurate knowledge of all the doctrines of Christianity. 
where we see in the scripture where it's where mentioned mysteries are mentioned, that means an understanding of divine truth that was once concealed that is now revealed. But if a person had all this knowledge and all this knowledge by inspiration and the infallible dictations and the illumination of the Holy Spirit that gives him the understanding of these mysteries and he said that he had not love then it wouldn't profit man nothing. If an individual had faith that is the type of faith that could move mountains the most wonder working faith neither it is worthwhile if an individual does not have love. Even giving all our goods to feed the poor or the sacrifices of one life for the faith of the gospel. You know, if we did all these benevolent acts charity to people but if they're not mo motivated by the right reason if we only do things so that people can speak well of us or that we do these things where it would benefit us in the long run it is worthless it, it, it is nothing you know and so here Paul is expressing and he's teaching the Corinthian saints that the things that we do, the spirit enablements that the Lord blesses the saints with, they should be motivated by one thing, not for self-glorification, but for love. And, and, and what is love? Love is the denial of oneself for the benefit of another. And so Paul says that even giving all my goods, you know, and, and the faith of the gospel and burned to death in defense of his truth. This would mean nothing unless we were motivated to these sufferings by true devotion and love to God and sincere love to his church and his people. It says that we have to understand that true love is the very heart and the very foundation of Christianity. Romans 5 8 states, For God commended his love towards us, that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 3 16 said that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever Believe in him should not pray, but have everlasting life. So now we see that love is the foundation. Love is the motivation. Love is the key. And God wants us to understand this. Even with all our natural abilities or gifts, and we take those things and we're not motivated, motivated by love to do them, then it profits us nothing. Verses 4 through 7 states, it says that love suffers long and is kind. Love envies not. Love vaunted not itself, is not puffed up. Do not behave itself unseemly. Seek not her own. It is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. All these are descriptions and characteristics of what love is. It says that love is long-suffering. That is, that love 
it can endure evil, injury, provocation without being filled with resentment and indignation and revenge. Love will put up with many slights and neglects from the person it loves and wait long to see the kindly effects of such patience working on those people that they love. Psalms 86 verse 15 says, But thou, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. That God is long-suffering towards mankind. First Peter, excuse me, Second Peter, the third chapter in verse nine states, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." Mankind will say, "Well, you know, you folks say that, you know, you church folks say that." God going to judge the world and Jesus is coming back and, and, and all this. Where, where is he at? Things ain't changed. He ain't been back. But God is long-suffering. God is giving mankind the opportunity that, that he's, he, he's willing, he's patient to wait to save the souls of wretched man. And so now we see that also that love is kind. Kind is being that love is courteous, that it is inclined to do all the good it can. Love seeks to be useful. Love is kind and tender-hearted. We find in the Ephesians 4.32 where it tells us, be ye kind, tender-hearted, forgiving ye one another, even as God has for Christ's sake forgiven you. So we are a monist to be kind, even the kindness of God that we have received, we're supposed to share that same kindness with our brothers and sisters. Love, envy it not. Love is not greed at the success of others. Love is not jealous. Love is not greed because somebody has success or or they're not greed at somebody's gifts or their good qualities or abilities. So many of us, we are envious of one another. We are jealous of each other. We don't want to see the other one succeed or what we think is to have the lamb light. But we always want to be in the spotlight. No, but love is not like that. You know, love, if we truly love our neighbors, we shall be so far from envying or being displeased with their success or well-being that we will share with them and rejoice with them in their success. The Bible tells us to, to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. Be glad for the success of our brothers and sisters. Don't be envious because enviousness is covetousness. So we need to stop trying to hold each other back. But instead of trying to hold each other back, to encourage each other to greater success. It says that love is born of not itself. It is not puffed up. Love is not bloated or blown up with self-conceit. It is not insolent, just, just snappy, just apt to despise others that, or, or to trample on them that they feel that is, is beneath them with content and scorn. Love does not look down its nose at other people, but love is tender-hearted. Love is concerned about each other. We find in, in Philippians chapter 2, 
verse 3 where it states, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. We don't have to be puffed up. We don't have to walk around with our chest all stuck out and and, 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 and thinking that we are better than anyone else. Because the Bible teaches that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that we all need a Savior. And, and, and that we all, that we all, regardless of what we might possess, that all mankind is in the same boat. And that it is because the mercy of God that we have not been consumed. Love do not behave unseemly. It does nothing out of place or time. Have you ever just met some people who are just, just rude? They just don't care about, uh, uh, about you or nobody else. They just going to do what, what they want to do, when they want to do, and how they want to do it. That is not love. But 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 love is careful not to go past the the bonds of decency, but behave towards all men with kindness and respect. Now you know you have some people where you know they they just as rude and, and, and then when the big shots who they so called think the big shots or those in great esteem uh, 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 come along, they just as nice and 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 uh. uh in common with them, but, but when other people come around that they think that they are below them or have no value where they can gain something from them, they're just as rude as, as could be. But love shouldn't be like that. We see that love seekers not its own. Love never seeks its own to the hurt of others or with the neglect of others. Love, the self-denial of the benefit of oneself for another. Love don't have to have its way all the time. Love don't have to be first. I got mine now. You get yours the best way you can. No, no, uh -uh. love is not like that. Love is willing to to sacrifice. Love is willing to to take second. It don't have to be first all the time. Love often neglects its own for the sake of others. You know, one of the greatest examples that I think that uh, uh, that we can see this is is the love for a parent for their children where the parents are willing to sacrifice to 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 sacrifice so that their children can have a quality life to sacrifice so that so that their children can have decent clothes housing education and so now this is this is the type of love where it's willing to neglect his own for the benefit of those that they love it also so that it also says that love is not easily provoked you know love what that would do it was correct a sharpness of temper you know you have some people you have seen them that you know that they easily fly off the off the handle at the slightest thing. It says some people that they're willing to fight at the, at the drop of a, of a hat, but love calms all that down. You're not so you're not so readily to 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 be uh, uh, argumentative and want to argue and fight all the time. But love, what it does, love takes all that away from the temp temper so that it does not suddenly conceive nor long 
and continue a uh, intense passion of uh, anger or hatred, where it make it somebody wants that love gives a person a, a even and the an easy disposition. Love thinks no evil. Love does not cherish or hold on to malice. Love d does not sit back and plot on by how I'm going to get even with you. How I'm going to get my revenge. I'm I'm just waiting just for the right moment. But, 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 but when that moment comes along, buddy, I got something for you. That is not love. True love is it's not like that. Love is not also love is not apt to be jealous and suspicious of somebody. Have you ever met somebody an individual where you gave them something and then they they was afraid to uh, uh, receive it because they was suspicious that you know it might be some ill motive behind that. You know, but a lot of people the the way they react is because that's the way that they think. That's the way they heart is. But so but love is not like that. It don't think no evil. If somebody so love is not jealous or suspicious. Also it states that love rejoices not in iniquity. That means that love takes no pleasure in doing injury or hurt to any. Nor will it rejoice at the faults and feelings of others. We all done seen it. We all done heard it. Huh? That serves them right. Huh? They thought this is a good thing if that should have happened to a good, good form. You know, but no. L love is not like that. Love is compassionate and have pity instead of gloating at someone else's failure. Now, love rejoices in the truth. Love is glad to see the success. Especially, love is glad to see the, the success of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the truth, working in the lives of men and women who are changed for the better. That's the type of truth that love rejoices in is glad to see men's eternal destiny turn around where they were on the road to, to eternal damnation but now they've been turned around and converted into now they are on their way to heaven to a, to, to a heavenly inheritance in Christ Jesus. Our lessons also say that love bears all things. It endures all things. Love will pass by and put up with injuries. Without indulging in anger or show wishing that they had an opportunity for revenge. Sometimes it is hard in the flesh to be quiet to to accept wrong that that is done to you. But 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 the word of God said that the vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. So so love instead of us desiring revenge and and, and restitution and payback, you know, love would pray for that individual that wronged us. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Now, the natural man can't do that of himself. It is only through the Spirit of God that we are able to do that. And it's only through the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, because the, cause the fruit of the Spirit, the first one is what? Is love. So now, only this can be done is that we are walking in the Spirit, that we are being led by the Spirit, and that we are not walking by the dictates of the flesh. It says that love believeth all things. Love is not distrustful and suspicious. 
hunt. Everybody hunt. They doing something, you know, when it, 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 everybody do not have an alternative motive when they trying to help somebody. See, but but we have some people that 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 they can't that they can't see good because they always looking to uh, the find fault. And so by their diligent search to find fault, they miss out on the good things in life because because they are not trusting. They don't believe. Love hopeth all things. Love is hope. Now, this word hope is, is not wishful thinking. Well, I hope this might happen or maybe, you know, if, if the wind blows this way, this could happen. Now, but the word hope, when we see in, in, in the scripture, that word hope is a confident expectation. First of all, we are confident because of the one that made the promise. We are confident not only because of the one that made the promise, but, but we know that they are faithful and that not only that they are faithful, but they had the ability to do what they had promised. And so, and so in, instead of being despondent, love help us hope for the best. Even in the trials and tribulations, of this world. Jesus told us, he said, in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Now, yes, we as Christians, we we have problems, we have heartaches, we have disappointments, we you know, you know, we lose loved ones through death, through sickness. But, but, but Jesus told us to be of good fear, uh, a good cheer, because He had overcome the world. He also told us that He would never leave us or forsake us. So even in that, that is our hope that knowing that the one who made the promise that He is faithful to His word. Love endures all things. Love perseveres, even in the midst of misunderstandings, even in the midst of being talked about, dogged out, abused. But love perseveres. Just think, just, just how much that God loves us. That that none of us have not always been obedient and pleasing to God. But God's love for us did not run out, but it persevered. And it will persevere throughout all eternity. Love endures all things. So we find in verses 8 and 13 of our lesson where it states that love never fell up. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spect as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face the face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. Now abide it, faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love never fails. Prophecy must fail. That is, when we're talking about prophecy, that is the prediction of the things to come or the 
interpretation of scripture by immediate in inspiration. That going to fail one day. It going to cease. It won't be needed no more. Tongues will cease. That is the miraculous power of speaking foreign languages or languages without learning them. Why? Because there will only be one language in heaven. Knowledge will vanish away. A knowledge of the mysteries supernaturally communicated. The knowledge of the divine truth that was once concealed that are now being revealed. It won't be no need for them because we will be in the very presence of God himself. So right now we know in part and we prophesize in part our best knowledge and our greatest abilities they are narrow and temporary just like our lives are here on this earth. But when that which is perfect shall come, when all this is changed and that which is perfect shall come, that which is in part shall be done away with. There will be no needs for tongues and prophecies and inspired knowledge in the future life because the church will be in a state of perfection complete in both knowledge and in holiness. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter in verse 49 says, And just as we have bore the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. We're going to be changed. We're going to be just like Jesus Christ. This mortal going to put on immortality. This corruption going to put on incorruption. First John 3, 2 states, Behold, now we are the children of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We will not need those spiritual gifts. But tongues going to cease, knowledge going to cease, because we're going to see God face to face. But understand this, and it goes on to say, now abide it. Faith, hope, in love. But the greatest of these three is love. Love is the key. You know why? Because God is love. First John 4 16 says, and we have known and believed the love that God have to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in him dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God in him. God has one desire for us. The Lord Jesus, when he left, before he left, going to carry and then returning to his father, he told his, his disciples that he had a commandment for them. And that was for them and for us to love one another even as he had loved us. Jesus loved us so much that he denied, he denied his pleasures and comfort of heaven and that he came to this earth and that he came to this earth and that he humbled himself and took upon himself the form of a servant. And being found in form of a servant, that he became obedient even unto the, to the death of the cross. A crucifying, a, a, 
a shameful death, but because this was the Father's will and that he loved the Father and that the Father loved us, he was willing to do that. That God loved us. That, that his perfect son would die for imperfect mankind. Love is the key. And so if, if we say that we are in Christ Jesus, we supposed to love as he loved. If we say that we are in him, we ought to walk even as he walked. May God bless you and keep you.